Hi guys, in this video I want to go over um, how uh, forward is a derivative. I didn't touch on that in the, deriv in the video on forward contracts so I wanted to touch on that in this video. Make that connection of why a forward contract is a derivative. We saw in the last video on forward contracts, if you haven't seen it go watch it, um, that a forward contract looks like this where you agree to buy or sell an asset at a time in the future for a specified price. In this case, um, let's look at a long forward contract. Uh, you're long a T forward contract at K. So in our case, um, in our case, T is going to be the time in the future, big T. We've seen that before. And K is going to be the price at which we are going to go uh, long this this uh, forward contract. So what does that mean? Uh, we saw that the payoff looks like this. Here's K. So that K up here is equal to this K. And the time in the future, big T, is equal to this subscript, big T. And we saw that the payoff looks like this. When you're long a forward, the payoff is S big T minus K. This is the payoff. So the payoff equals. And we saw what that means is that the payoff is, is just uh, a fact that when ST is above K, you're going to make money. So you would be above uh, zero here, going up above zero when ST is above K. And we saw that before that if ST is over here, you're going to be above zero. And if ST is below K, then you're going to be, uh, you're going to have a payoff that is less than zero down here. But how does this make it a derivative? When people say that a forward contract is a, deriv a derivative, what do they mean? When they say that, uh, what they mean is that the payoff derives from uh, sorry about that the sorry I just clicked the scroll button they're saying that the payoff here let me switch colors real quick this payoff right here derives itself from an underlying contract. So this is the underlying. This is the underlying contract and the payoff derives itself from the underlying. So to make that clear, um, in this case, this ST is going to come from, I drew another graph here, and this is going to be the underlying graph. Okay. So at time zero, you're going to have a stock price of S0. And as we saw in an earlier video, we don't know what the stock price is going to be at time t. One instance is that the stock price can move down and it could be here at st. So this is one instance of st. Another instance is if the stock price moves down and this could be st. You know when I say st I mean the stock price at time big t because this is this is a uh, this is time on this axis. So this is time on this axis. So we start at a, an earlier time as zero, meaning today, and in the future at time big T, the stock price can follow an infinite number of paths, right? It could go down, it could go up, it could end up over here. This could be ST. It could go all the way up. The point is that this payoff of this forward contract is derived from whatever this 
these terminal prices are, these ST prices are. There's only going to be one of them. The true path that it's going to take is just is going to be one of these infinite number of paths. And in our case, let's say that um, it is this path. Whatever that path is, here is that price, S big T. This S big T, the price that the stock takes, is going to feed in to this forward contract right here. And it is also going to be the value on this uh, X axis down here. And if ST is, let's put, let's also put K here. For this forward contract, you have a K somewhere around here. This is K. You select a strike price. That K in this forward contract is equal to this K right here. And if ST is above K, like, like in our instance it is, here is ST. The payoff is going to be positive, and it's going to be this, right? ST minus K. So this would be your payoff, ST minus K, where this is ST. ST could be anywhere on this axis. And all these dashes I'm making are related, <coughs> are possibilities, but only one of these dashes is going gonna, is gonna to be the true value of the stock price at time t. It can only have one value at time t. Whatever that value is, it's going to land on this x-axis, either above these, this strike price or below the strike price or at the strike price. In our case, in this example, I showed you just a few possible paths the stock could travel. And then I, I said, let's assume this blue line is the true path, and it happens to be above K. And so here, ST is above K. This forward contract is deriving its payoff from, you could see, this ST. It's deriving its payoff from ST, which is the stock price of the underline, this underline right here. So you can think of it as, let me try to leave this up here. You can think of it as you have a stock price and that's going to feed into uh, this forward contract. And the payoff of that forward contract is going to be um, is going to be positive. This is a long forward contract. Is going to be positive if ST is greater than K or it's going to be negative if ST is less than K. But what I want to sh I want to really make the connection is that this is called ST and what makes it a derivative what makes a forward contract a derivative is that is that that payoff is a derivative of this stock price 
So that's basically the whole diagram I wanted to show you is that why is a forward contract a derivative? It's because the payoff derives from ST, S big T. And S big T, as we saw above, can be anything. There's infinite possibilities for S big T. Whatever its, its true path is, out of all those infinite possibilities, it can only be one at time T. And that's always going to be true. There can only be one price at time big T. Whatever that price is, it's going to feed in to it's going to feed into this payoff function, which is st minus k, and you're going to get a payoff. And the payoff is going to be positive if st is greater than k, anywhere above k. If st is greater than k, you're going to have a positive payoff. If st is below k, all in this region, you're going to have a negative payoff. And I just put the positive here to say the long forward contract is going to have positive payoff if ST is greater than K and negative payoff if ST is less than K. So that's all I wanted to do in this video. I didn't make that connection in the first video on forward contracts. But it's critical that you see that a forward contract which has a payoff of ST minus K is a derivative and why is it called a derivative it's because the st in its payoff is is uh, you know it derives itself from or the payoff derives itself from the st which is the underlying stock price I should put underlying because you're going to hear the word underlying if you're uh, looking at this stuff So you have an underlying asset, which is a stock. The payoff, oops, the payoff of that forward contract derives itself from the underlying contract. And that's why it's called a derivative. It is derived. The word derived is the key word. The payoff is derived from the underlying. And I sort of want to make that connection very clear because it's important that you see that. And graphically, it looks like this. You have an underlying up here. It can take infinite number of paths. Whatever path it takes at time big T is going to be the price. That's going to feed into this forward contract payoff function, which is ST minus K. It's going to take that ST. The same thing goes for a short forward contract. You just, it would be K minus ST. So uh, that's it for this video. If you have um, questions, let me know. Um, but that's it for right now. Just wanted to make that connection. Thanks. Bye.